Welcome. This video talks about why it's central to have a clear shared owner's view. The shared owner's view should be clear in every company. The owner's view tends to be clear in listed companies, but unfortunately, that's not the case in other companies. But why is it so important? If the company has only one owner, then the owner's view is easier to specify. The idea is to write it down. Writing clarifies thoughts. This is why the loan owner also needs to write things down. If a company has multiple owners, all owners need to present their views. Finally, the shared owner's view is written. When the company was founded, the owner's shared view was quite clear. Usually, it's not written, uh, but it's present in the owner's mind and present in speech and deeds. Later, an update may become necessary, especially in certain situations. The business environment constantly changes, often without notice. Time has passed since the company's founding. The company may also have expanded into other businesses or even industries. Ownership may have expanded or changed. Some may have sold their shares. New shareholders may have gone on board. There may be more owners today than three years ago. Changes in ownership can mean changes in views. If the shared owner's view is not updated, tensions may remain under the surface. These can surface later and create conflicts. To avoid these types of issues, you can agree on a shared view and write it. Yet an up-to-date and shared owner's view is not at all a self-evident thing that exists crisp and clear at all times. What is suitable to include in a document that describes the shared owner's view? The starting point is the company's purpose, the big reason why it exists. When customers look at the company and ask why the company exists, what do they say? In what great task is the company helping them? Summarizing this reason for the company staff gives everybody involved a deep sense of meaning. It's the reason, the fuel, why your staff comes to work to help customers. A company should crystallize its purpose into a short form. It's the beginning of how the company differentiates from its competition. Next, after purpose, comes the company's values. What values are fundamental for the owners? They can be things such as responsibility, environmental values, or something related to the staff's well-being. The company should also summarize its values as a few key ideas. These values are tracked continuously. Actions contrary to the company values are not allowed, as they would conflict with the owner's view. The next important thing is the boundary conditions of ownership. Can ownership be transferred and grown? And if yes, with what terms? Boundary conditions of ownership can be a difficult thing to take up for discussion. But when the owners have specified them together and clarity is reached, the atmosphere improves in the company. It is a real relief. The rules of the game are clear for all owners. The boundary conditions must also be written in a shareholder's agreement. Willingness to grow the company is central. What is the level of growth wanted? Will the company strive to grow organically or through acquisitions? And what is the profitability goal? In this sense, three types of strategies exist. One, profitable growth, where growth and profitability are essential. Two, maximal growth here. Growth is the primary goal. Three, profitability is number one. Growth has a minor role. It would be great if strong growth and good profitability could both be goals at the same time, but high profitability usually hinders growth. The owners should discuss which strategy will be used and include it as a part of their shared view. How significant risks are the owners ready to take? Without risks, there can be no reward. It's also a good idea to determine the equity ratio. How much capital will we invest ourselves and how much will we collect from the outside? Last but not least is the return on investment. How much dividend will be distributed and how much will be invested back into the company? Many times this can be hard to decide. In either case, it is so that the owners can and will determine how things go inside the company. It also means that when decisions are made, full commitment must be there. In some situations where many owners 
have different goals, it is sometimes easier not to write down a shared owner's view yet. Not making an effort to do it guarantees that the company won't succeed optimally. The shared owner's view needs to be written down. Only when it has been written down does it exist in reality. Writing it down can be a very delicate and tough spot. During writing, it's essential to ensure that everybody has a real possibility to influence and comment on the entries honestly. A good outcome is that everything is documented on a single page. We have seen what great feeling people get when a shared owner's view exists. People usually are pleased about the written down document, even relieved. This happens even among those who have initially been very disagreeable. Documentation allows everybody to know what has been agreed and what is expected. Tensions also disappear. Life is much easier for the board of directors and the CEO with clear rules. If clarity isn't there, then the business strategy will be lacking a foundation. In this situation, management has all the power, yet the management doesn't have any clear direction. This can cause a situation where the management proceeds in some direction and the owners suddenly notice that it's not what they wanted. How is the shared owner's view visible in the company's daily operations? The worst type of outcome that the company can encounter happens when owners communicate different messages, even conflicting in everyday life. For this reason, the practical roles of the owners need to be clearly specified. Should the company employ all owners? What is the role of an owner employed in the company? Many owners have a double role as both the company CEO and the chair of the board of directors. Sometimes this can be even unfavorable and kind of unnecessary. When the owner is assigned a specific role that fits their skill set, the company usually gets more out of it. Can the owner's families, uh, their loved ones, be working for the company? This is worth recording in writing during fair weather. When children are small, everything is okay, but when they reach the age of employment, issues can appear unless things have been agreed upon beforehand. A family member may have been employed even if some other form of knowledge is needed. It is an excellent thing if the family can bring their know-how to bear in the company. Even then, it is always good to find the best solution for the company. And when that happens, it is the CEO who decides who gets employed. The board's role is visible in the company's everyday life, primarily through the CEO. Many times some of the owners sit on the board and that might be unnecessary. A board member needs to carry a different type of responsibility than the owner. And not everyone is from the get-go suitable for a board role. And that is why not everyone should sit on the board. The role of the board is to ensure that the will and interest of the owners are realized. If the owners don't get the results they desire, they can always change the board. The board chooses the CEO with supporting and sparring to succeed and substitutes the CEO if needed. A clear power structure is essential. In this picture, based on Leinema Harpasen's work, we present the owner's power versus the power of the board. The top right corner represents the best situation when owners vest the board with all appropriate power. The most is gained from the operations. The board supports the CEO. The worst situation from the owner's perspective is in the bottom left corner in the red area. In that situation, the CEO has all the power in the worst possible case. This combines all authority in one person without direction, and that is not how it is supposed to be. If the board doesn't possess authority in practice, then the power remains with the CEO. If the owner decides to keep the power for themselves, then the board is unnecessary and uh, the CEO can't run the company properly. When the owner's shared view is read to the board, they oversee that it becomes a reality. The board is the best institution to safeguard the rights of the owners. It's also in the interest of the CEO that the owner's view has been written. The CEO is expected to succeed. The CEO performs best when the owner's view is clear. The business strategy depends on it. This enables the owners to trust that the CEO will do things in line with the view. Thank you for watching this part. Now, here's a couple of questions. 
Is the owner shared view clear in your company? Is it written so that the board can oversee its implementation from the business strategy? These questions can be a bit difficult. We are quite familiar with it. If you're wrestling with these specific topics, we can get on a call for a short sparring session. Please get in touch if you want to talk. Take care.